Yeah, so the agenda to discuss the importance of risk forecasting uh, and also for us to share some of the tools that we have at Company Watch with you, just to give you some insight into how we use uh, our predictive tools to forecast risk in advance as well. Um, so, yeah, just to discuss uh, really and, and to kick the topic off, um, clearly a lot has changed in the last three years. Um, what with uh, the pandemic initially, um, then the more recent situation with inflations and, and the war in Ukraine. So as we move into 2023, um, I think, you know, dealing with shocks, looking at asking for resilience is, is really playing an important part in a lot of people's minds. Um, Philip and I re meet quite regularly, uh, and we were discussing only last week, weren't we, Phil, um, the, the importance of, of, of forecasting. I'm guessing a lot of you saw the news yesterday, Simon Jack on the BBC uh, talking about, you know, uh, the, the, the resilience of businesses and how certainly retail and, and, um, and um, the entertainment sectors are, are really struggling. Um, uh, and Phil, give us some insight in terms of sort of your thoughts. You know, like I say, you're, you're sitting on a number of boards presently. So I just wondered uh, so, sort of what the general view out, out there is. Yeah, thanks, Craig. And thanks for having me on this morning. And good to see lots of um, names and faces that, um, that I recognise and some that I don't. So um, good to be here. Um, I think we're in a... In a interesting position as you mentioned we've been through you know covid and and all the stuff that we've had to live through the last couple of years um the thing that strikes me with people i talk to currently is almost the uncertainty about where we're heading yesterday we just saw the cpi drop um from um December to January by 1.2 points. Um, but the S&P economist was saying that um, that was accompanied by an increase in optimism in the private sector business ownership. Um, and I think business owners I talk to um, are sort of struggling to know whether they should be planning for a, a really deep and difficult recession or whether it isn't going to be as bad as they thought. Um, and, and that must influence the way they think, the way they approach their business and so on. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges we're facing right now. Um, it's almost it's almost better if you know it's going to be bad than if you think it might be bad, but maybe it won't um, in terms of what you what you do next. Um, but there are, you know, there are all sorts of pressures, which I'm sure we're going to get into this morning about businesses facing. Um, and you talked about Simon Jack and the entertainment sector. And, and I still remember vividly a, a piece from The Times last October, where they interviewed a number of pub owners who were just hibernating for the winter and shutting down so that they could avoid the increased energy costs and so on. Um, and, and, you know, if you're a business, once you take that decision to, to shut down for a period, opening up again is much more difficult. And I think the risk is that businesses won't. Yeah, I, I, and I think, you know, we certainly see it here where I live in Hereford. We've we've seen a lot of businesses that are, and restaurants that are, are closing, you know, then certainly Mondays, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, um, you know, they, they're closing down. They're not open anymore. Um, you know, the, the, the high street restaurant side of of where i live is is almost a ghost town monday and tuesday now uh, wednesday thursday friday saturday it, it's open more but i'm sure that's the case up up and down the country uh, as you say as as more and more businesses are looking at that um I, yeah i have somebody that's looking to move in, into a new town as well and and one of the things he's looking at is how vibrant that that town is and when he initially looked at that town 18 months ago and the high street you know today's high street in the same in the same town paints a, a very different picture and we're only 18 months on from where he initially started to, to look to relocate to so he's now considering a complete relocation based on the whole landscape of, of where he was thinking of moving to has essentially ch changed and you know we know retail has, has been hit hard in the last 18 months we you know we see the insolvency figures con continuing to rise at the end of 2022 um and, and moving into 2023 um we certainly don't see any any change in in terms of that for sure it's um but but like you say there is optimism out there in a number of areas as well 
Um, and, and that could be a good thing. Uh, I, I think the ambiguity around um, the support from government around energy, um, you know, the, the, there's not any clarity in terms of that. That is playing a part, certainly at the moment, um, for sure. Um, and, and I think, you know, small businesses in particular do need to get so, some more clarity in terms of what, what that support is going to look like going forward. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Uh, and, and in terms of in terms of risk forecasting, where do you think where do you think that plays a part? You know, we 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 talk about the shocks that have have happened. Um, certainly, you know, uh, I, I think as businesses were, were were starting to grapple with the supply chain issues as we came out of COVID, um, certainly they haven't changed. They're, 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 we've obviously gone into a a war that's affecting. Um, a lot of global economies um, and certainly has had a heavy impact in terms of the supply chain. Um, but where do you think the pressures are on, on business in, in terms of being able to, to, to forecast? Well, I think it's, it's the bigger picture that, that we need to consider. Um, you know, traditionally, businesses look at their customer base and they, you know, they analyze it and then they look at the risk levels and so on um, but I've said for a long time that often more important than your customer is your customer's customer um, and you know if if your customer is hit by a bad debt what's the impact on them and therefore the impact on you um, so there's that whole piece around looking beyond the immediate customer or supplier and understanding some of the dynamics that are impacting out there and then the bigger picture around the economy um, and, and general supply chain issues energy costs and so on um, have an impact across the board you know house sales fell three percent between November and December HMRC announced this week um, we know that the, 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 the average price of, of wages is going up and the demands on it are going up further all of those things have an impact and if you've got a customer who is is labor intensive and has got a lot of employees then what does that mean for their 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 employment bill their wages bill um each month and what impact will have that that have on their ability to continue trading um at a profit without increasing prices which in turn impact on on demand and all of these things inter interrelate so i think it's it's really important that we get that we encourage businesses to look at, at first their customer base and where those customers are significant then in real detail and i know you're going to come on to forecasting and stuff shortly so i won't i won't get into that but equally looking beyond that customer at what happens next down the line in terms of both suppliers and customers and what happening what happens in the wider economy that impacts on, on businesses, you know, I mean, the, you know, the hospitality industry has talked about the impact of train strikes um, around Christmas on, yeah. on 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 their on their businesses and so on. Um, you and I were talking before we went live about the problems on the trains yesterday. Um, you yeah. talked about someone looking to you know to move to a location that's now much less vibrant than it was. If a, if a, if a location is less vibrant, that will impact on the infrastructure. There'll be less trains running. There'll you know all of these things have a have a, a, a knock-on effect on what's going on and it's easy for a business particularly a small business to feel like they're in a bit of a sort of silo just looking at what they do but if they ignore what's going on around them with their customers their customers customers the economy the market and so on then they're in danger of getting you know caught out and i think it's that it's that forecasting what's going to happen that is really important yeah i i, I think you you know we're, we're you, you know we're a company that's that, that's based you know our our history on modeling and on trying to predict outcomes into the future um and, and that's that's what we we've done very well with the h score over the years but you know bringing uh bringing new products and new tools to the market to allow people to easily adjust and, and to forecast them and predict predict risk themselves without being scoring experts or having to build sophisticated models um it, it's I think we've lost you, Craig. So I'll I'll just jump in if I may, um, to keep things going. Uh, and I think 
I think what you were going to talk about was your, your forecasting model. Um, but I think the ability to look at a business um, and say, well, what would happen if wages went up by 30%? What would happen if stock in prices increased by X percent? What would happen if, if rent went up X percent or rent income fell by X percent? It, it is really powerful. Um, and, and certainly from my time in credit management over you know several decades, um, the ability to do that, I would have found incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, and, and the need to look forward in that way is is a you know is crucial um and to be able to predict what happens in the event of certain changes that can or can't be anticipated is incredibly useful I don't yeah know, you're back hopefully hopefully you've got me back now in terms of that yeah it's uh I'm having an issue with the uh, with the, the the broadband at the moment by the looks of things. So yeah, ab absolutely, Phil. In terms of, uh, I think I was I was going to jump in and say, you know, obviously we were forced into a situation where we had to provide tooling with COVID uh, with, with COVID nineteen hitting, um, and, and that really has extended itself now into a more widely used tool that people can use um, for 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 modeling uh, and, and effectively modeling the risks and the outcomes as you say so um yeah and and, and i guess you know the idea of today's uh, uh webinar was to really give some people an insight into how that tool can be used and and also sub tools of that so allowing people to really model and to experiment um using some of the tooling that's now available so um, what we'll do is we'll we'll jump into a very quick demonstration of um, that product just to show people the type of scenarios that we've built in, and and taking your point um, in in terms of, you know the the what if your your customer's customer um, you know you know has a has a large substantial debt and, uh, as an example so um, so yeah let's uh, let's just jump into the product and we'll give everybody a uh, an overview of what that looks like. So hopefully everybody can see the screen now. Uh, Philip, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, good, good. So, so, so this is the dashboard uh, that we have at Company Watch, and this allows people to search on on particular entities. So if we just uh, use EasyJet as an example. Um, with McAlpine instead. Uh, so by searching on the business that we're interested in, uh, what we've created here is uh, not only can you access the report, um, we've now created a facility which allows you to simply forecast by using the forecast view. Uh, and what this allows you to do is to create different scenarios or build your own scenarios around where you're seeing the risk. So if we see the risk position today in the industry average, we can see that the, the H score on Robert McAlpine is 57, the industry average is 70. If I flip into forecast view, what forecast view is now doing is it's built an extension um, of 12 months to December 22, taking the exact figures that the company was presenting in its previous filing and just expediting that over for, for the 12 months to the end of December. And then what we've built into Forecast View is some immediate scenarios. So let's say that Robert McAlpine have a margin squeeze. What we've done is by clicking this button here, we can actually represent a margin squeeze and what that would do to the overall score just at the click of a button so if i if i do that we can see immediately that the h score uh, has dropped well into the warning zone um, and that's by using a standard button that basically then represents itself in terms of a two percent improvement in sales but a ten percent increase in terms of the cost of sales and also a 10 percent increase in terms of the overheads and then what i've got then is the numbers um, as as they would appear in terms of the sales the cost of goods and the overheads based on the 
uh, scenario that I've just put into the forecast view. Um, so this tooling is really easy uh, just to use the scenarios or alternatively, what I can do is I can then change those scenarios using these sliders to basically measure my own risk. So by changing these sliders, we can adjust things constantly using the sliders to make those simple adjustments. What I've flipped into now is essentially what we call custom forecast. So this is allowing our users and our customers to make those adjustments themselves, maybe based on interims, maybe based on uh, assumptions uh, in terms of their customers, or indeed, as you say, Phil, the, the customer's customer. So we've tried to build forecast view to make it really simple for, for clients to use. We, with these, uh, with, with these, actual buttons and, and these scenarios that have built in. Uh, another example is we could hit the button for a key customer insolvency. Um, and again, it will make an immediate change to the H score. And again, it will extrapolate the numbers um, so that the numbers are presenting themselves as the business would based on those scenarios. Uh, all of the buttons that we've increased, uh, that, that we've chosen here, um, are available within the user guide so that you can see what assumptions are being made to do that. But like I say, the, uh, the, the one that we uh, see getting used the most is our, our customers using the custom forecast view, which really does allow the, the company then to build its own scenarios back in. So trying to make it very simple and very easy to make those, uh, make those adjustments and, and, and create uh, a, a, a view, if you like, of what things are likely to, to look like into the future based on what we know today. Um, and, and like I say, this is a, this is a tool that, that's available to our entire range of customers um, uh, and is being widely used by the market for sure. And, and Craig, I mean, if I might jump in, I mean, I think it, it, this is interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, it's not rocket science. If, if you're a if you're a sales rep going into a business regularly um, and you're chatting to people in the business, you'll find out what the wage rises they've paid are. You know, you'll 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 find out how much they've 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 increased wages by you know in this year's increase. Um, the 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 input costs of raw materials are readily readily available from the ONS and other sources. Yep. So you can actually you know if you know that that, that they've awarded a ten percent pay increase, you can just slot that in and see what the impact is. Um, and 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 it that makes it very specific so it's not just well what happens if things increase that's actually we know they're paying that much more what will it, what impact will that have on the business and on it on its outcome and on its um it's you know numbers in the next year which is which is really powerful yeah and i think the fact that we then extrapolate the numbers built into those scenarios i know people use their own models internally as well now um yeah, you know, ha having the model available to to really then look at what the impact is on those numbers, um, using very simple tooling is is obviously what we tried to do here. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I I agree completely. It's uh, you know it, it's a good tool to al allow the clients to, uh, to to forecast very simply and very easily. If our customers want to take this one step further, um, uh, Philip, what they can do is they can then move into um, the area that we call experiments. Now, the experiments area allows them to create a complete experiment based on uh, maybe management data or, or, again, taking this to the next level and really experimenting even further. Uh, if I click onto our experiments area, What you'll see here is that um, we're able to, again, create a, a, a fictitious uh, period into the future, and then we can build on this. So, um, for example, if, if Robert McAlpine's numbers uh, were to dramatically rise, um, we could build that in. So we're actually keying in the numbers based on what we're seeing. And then that will immediately make the adjustment to the forecast view above. If I jump into one that we know quite well, so if I jump into EasyJet, which obviously is in the news quite a lot at the moment, I 
when I jump into our experiment tool again from here. I'm just simply creating a quick forecast. You can see that we've just ex basically mirrored the uh, the financials exactly as they were for the period ending 30th uh, of September 22. But let's say that EasyJet uh, was to slip back and another uh, another shock was to hit uh, and we slipped those numbers back to where we were uh, sort of COVID time. I'll just change the turnover figure. And immediately you see a downturn in terms of the H score. Um, if we just pop that back. It'll simply jump back up. So a lot of our customers are using this where they're getting and asking interim information from their customers, particularly the key customers, so they, they can start to put interims or management accounts into this tool so that they can then look at what, what the impact is based on, on those managements or on those interims. And like I say, that not only um, do, do we do the turnover figure, we go right the way through the PL and, and balance sheet. So if, for example, um, you know, somebody had a, a long-term debt that they were able to reduce down. So if EasyJet was able to reduce that number down, um, and the shareholders funds were then improving and i'm just playing with some numbers in here now uh, we can then jump back up and see what the impact of that would have in terms of the numbers and we can see that that would then increase and improve um, the, the the h score so this tool is used um, quite substantially in in terms of um, taking management accounts allowing our customers to key those management accounts in to create their own experiments based on what they know today about the business. Um, and I think that's really important then in terms of being able to, uh, to provide um, some sort of indicator of the potential risk into the future of, of the businesses. Um, and, and it's a really, really uh, successful tool that I would say probably about 70% of our clients uh, are now using and it's one of those tools that's being used a lot more um, week in week out as we get into the possible scenario of moving into recession or not hopefully that was really uh, interesting to, to share the thoughts um, and, and to provide you with some overview of, of the particular uh, product um, our forecast view and our experiments tool um, uh, we've got about five minutes left of, of the webinar, so I'm um, really open to uh, uh, to all the attendees to to, to ask any questions um, that they have to either myself or Philip uh, uh, around uh, around today's discussion. Well, while we're waiting, Craig, if I might just say, I mean, it, it seems to me that that knowledge increases confidence. And the more knowledge you have, you more, more confident you can be about what you're predicting is going to happen. Um, and for key customers, particularly having visibility of, of where they're going and what outcomes are going to be, you know, they're going to be seeing is so much more powerful than, than sort of your finger in the air and hoping. Um, and, and some of this stuff is, for me, is, is transformational um, in terms of how it enables you to really get behind and dig so much deeper into into what you're looking at no thanks for that phil um yeah like like i said um yeah we we have access to see so many of our customers using this and and the increase certainly in the last couple of months uh, as you know has been incredible as, as people are fighting with understanding uh, what the futures hold for, for many businesses, maybe many suppliers as well. So um, hopefully this has been a really insightful webinar into the tools that are available um, and into how we see things progressing. And, and not only are, are, we, uh, are we excited by what we can do with tools in the future and, and by what experiments and forecasts you bring, um, we're excited by, by new tools that are coming down the line to address the needs of our customers as well today.